This session is specifically for supply chain management executives and professionals. Suppose you are a supply chain executive, and you've just received a data file of historical shipment records. What insights would you hope to gain from the data? How about the following list? Seasonality of the shipment volume. Distance distribution and average weighted distance. Regional patterns such as shipping origin and destination locations. Shipping mode distribution. Carrier utilization for regions and lanes. Additional ad hoc inquiry of the shipment characteristics. Most likely, you would like to see the corresponding maps and dashboard charts. Well, you can get all of the above, with a few mouse clicks by yourself. You don't have to be a data scientist to do this. Now, let's get started. Start the SCM application. Select the generic project template, My Project 1. Here's the project menu setup, and we will use these menu items to perform analytics on the shipment data. Right now, as you can see here, we don't have any data tables in SCM. Here is the data file that you just received, it's named My New Shipments. These are the data columns. Here's the Shipment Origin Zip Code column. The Destination Zip Code column. The Carrier SCAC. Shipping Mode. Shipments Tendered Type. The shipment weight. The timestamp when the shipment record was created. And, the scheduled pickup date and time. It's got many records. Look here, it's got over 161,000 records. Now, let's import this data file into SCM. Here's the project menu. Mouse click on it to run. Select the data file. This is where we assign the data columns to be used for the from ID and to ID columns. SCM is configured to auto detect what data columns to be used for the from ID and to ID columns. Press OK button to confirm the selections. Now, the shipment data is imported into SCM and they are ready to be used for map display and data analytics. Notice, in addition to the original data columns, SCM created new columns here, particularly the distance and color columns. A specific color is assigned to a shipment based on the distance of the shipment. We can hide, or bring up, the navigator anytime we want. Let's hide it to see the whole map display. Now, let's click on this menu item to generate the chart of the shipment volume over time. Select week as the time series data point. Here's the weekly shipment volume chart. It looks slightly trending up, and basically stable. Here's the query result data table for the chart. Double click on a week row, and the map will display the shipments scheduled for pickup during that week. As we click through the rows of the weekly summary table, we can see that the shipment pattern stays pretty much the same from week to week. Now, Let's use month as the time series data point. Here's the table for the monthly shipment statistics. Double click on a month row will display the shipments scheduled for pickup during that month. This project menu is to generate a chart for shipment count by distance range distribution. The chart shows the distribution pattern of the shipment delivery distance, which implies delivery service levels. 
Double click on the row header will display the shipments in the corresponding distance band. Double click on the column header here will display the shipments corresponding to all the checked distance bands. The pie chart here shows the shipment distribution across the distance bands. Double click the chart will pop up an expanded view of the chart. Now, let's click on this menu item to generate a summary table, with the list of carriers and the corresponding shipments transported by each carrier. As you can see, the majority of the shipments are transported by the top 5 carriers. Again, double click on a row will display the shipments transported by this carrier on the map. Looking at the map, we can quickly see where the carriers operate across the geographical regions, and how we utilize them. Now let's generate a summary table for the shipment count by transportation mode. Here's the list of transport modes for the shipments. Here's the display for the LTL shipments, the truckload shipments, and the rail shipments. This table and map graphical display combination enables us to quickly gain insights about the shipment pattern and the operations performance. In addition to the predefined tables and map displays, we can also generate dynamic analytics, using this menu item, generate keyword list for a column. Let's test it out. Let's generate some statistics for the shipments originating from each state. Select the origin state column. Here we have the summary stats for the states. Double click on a state row, the corresponding shipments originating from the state will be displayed on the map. To display multiple states at the same time, we can use the checkbox column, check the selected states, and then double click on the column header. To focus on the states with the most origin shipments, we can sort the table by the shipment count. Click on the row to display the shipments, one state at a time. Click on the column header to display the shipments originating from all the checked states all at once. Let's create another keyword list, with the shipment's tendered type. So, here we have three types of tender. Auto, Manual, and Spot. Normally, LTL and parcel shipments are auto-tendered. Truckload shipments can be auto-tendered too, if the transportation management system is well set up with contracted truckload carriers. So, the manual and spot tenders should be minimal. This provides great insight about the transportation management system and operations. We can keep on going like this, and do a lot of interesting and insightful discoveries. But let's save the rest for your future exercise. Before we conclude this session, let's take a look at the tables we have been working with. This is the original shipment data table. Here are the new tables that we created for the dashboard charts and query results. Let's save all of them to the hard drive. And, let's add all these tables to the project, so next time when we open the project, they will be automatically loaded into SCM. 
Now, having saved all the tables, we can safely close the project. Close the project. Now, all the tables are removed from the SCM. And the project menu is gone as well. Let's reopen the project. Voila! All the project data tables are here, with all the updated data we worked on last time. And, here's the project menu. So, that's it. In summary, with this project template, my project 1, we can do a quick browser to new data file, generate analytics dashboard charts, and display the thousands of records on a map. We can do all of these with just a few mouse clicks on the project menu items. See how easy it is. By the way, all the project files covered in this session are available for download with SCM. Of course, you need to download and install SCM distribution package first. Hope you enjoyed this session. Thank you.